word. Welcome to the B-Side World. We are a group of friends from around the world discussing second page news. I am Alex and I'm here with Dev. Hey. Emma. Hello. CJ. Hello. Max. Hello. And today I think we're going to kick it off with Dev. All right. This week, your article, Dev. Yes. I shall say what it is. <laughs> Japan's <laughs> 60 hours working <laughs> weeks. Oh, so it's so basically weird. talking about their work ethic. Why did you choose this? Uh, Maxi was saying, what were you saying? It, the title is the photos of um, Japan's 60 hour working week, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah. Possibly. So the title, the title is photos of Japan's office workers during their 60 hour weeks. And the photos are basically of businessmen curled up on the side of the street, often with alcohol, like alcohol in their hands. And they're saying how this is normal in their culture. If you see some of the positions, these guys are sleeping because they're, they're just exhausted. There's one guy that's half standing up on a railing, <laughs> just held up by a rail. I saw that. Just, yeah. that that's intense. That, that kind of tiredness, I've only experienced once. When? When? And I can't even remember. I was that tight. No, <laughs> so, so I never experienced it. Would it be worth it? Like, how much? If I said you're going to get a hundred thousand dollars a year, nah. or like an extra no hundred thousand dollars? No, you'd have to pay me. Oh man, you'd have to pay me a lot. To be honest, though, I think I I I don't know if Maxi, when you asked a hundred thousand dollars, are you speaking American or Australian? Because they're two. To be honest, things. I just said a number because I had no idea what. Uh, it was mainly Australian, <laughs> but I that's why I said maybe a hundred thousand dollars extra. But that's not important. Oh, the point extra, was, sorry, is I'm it mis- like, yeah. is there a, is there a, uh, like for me to work that tired, like the money in the moment, I don't know, like, would you take a year of your life being like that to, yeah. for like a lot of money and then it sets yeah. you up? Yeah. I intend to work forever. 60, I intend to work closer to 60 hours a week this year. But have you seen these pictures? Yeah. No, have I you ha- seen these pictures, Alexander, in I, WhatsApp? I haven't. Yeah, but I also know what 60 hours a week is. So Show I can look at it. Oh, it's CJ. No, so entitled. You know, you'd be able to see these if you um if you downloaded WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have a lot of things if I downloaded WhatsApp. So basically, with this article... I don't even know what that means. It said that they Japan's had this sort of work ethic instilled in the country since the end of... Okay. Since the end of Are World sure War II. Are you sure these guys just haven't been clubbing? Because I've been like after a night clubbing in this position, like pretty dishammered. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. basically, it was a photographer walking around and he would go after hours and take these um, pictures, right? Um, and this was back 2008 to 2010. And he's only just posted them now. And he did have a lot, when he actually posted them online, he had a lot of comments. And one of them was, um, like, are you sure they weren't just drunk? And he said, well, some of them did might have had a few drinks for sure, and others are literally just at the point of ex- exhaustion. And apparently, it's it's just a- widely accepted; it's commonplace to see people sleeping on the streets in Japan, and it's very safe. Like, very rarely would they get sort of mugged or anything like that. It's just kind of the norm, and it's because of this. Is sort it of, the norm? Yeah. So, this photographer's what? wife is actually Japanese. And she even says like, and he lived there. He lived there for a while. And he said when he would go out and do it, and it's usually you wouldn't see it in the day. You usually see it at night. And so he's like, when I'd go out at night, it wouldn't take me long to find, you know, some salary man, as he calls it, sleeping on the floor. And it's usually sort of around train station areas. Will these be, yeah, like certain industry type of people, not like the average, the norm for the industry, not the norm no, for No, well, he said that it's like a lot of people do it, but he specifically <laughs> wanted to take pictures of these businessmen because he thinks that he wanted to drive the issue forward about, you know, their long working hours and how it kind of needs to change. And he thought that having, showing businessmen in suits lying on the floor is more like jarring, more like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, maybe we do need well, to do something. So when they talk sixty hour week, are they talking sixty hour working like working hours, or are they talking sixty hours at work? Because that's a difference as well. Um, I'm. It doesn't say. Doesn't specify. Um, but it just said um, that there's sort of like an obligation. Like basically, it says he he actually says my photos are just an example of how things are in Japan. In Japanese culture, you're just nobody. You could work hard and then the next day you'd get fired. And it's almost an obligation that at nighttime you go out with 
your bosses and colleagues as well. So they're just always at work. Like they're just, like, that could be part of it, but they're just always at work. Alexander, you said, you said that you would, um, you, you, you're going to be close to be work. Oh, freak. You're going to be working close to 60 hours this year to. Well, so at work. Mm-hmm. I'm a, like, uh, this is including my lunch breaks, which I don't take all of my lunch break. I'm 45 hours Monday to Friday already. So 15 hours on the weekend to me is nothing. Like, it's all dependent on, if you're saying 60 hours a week and then going and doing loads of other stuff, like, yeah, no, you can't do that. But One if you're minute. fine with just working, Morning. like, I don't mind just working. Hmm. Right I hear now, what you're saying. Like, I would take a year. It wouldn't be that hard. I wouldn't be exhausted asleep on the street type. Uh, See, I don't think, that, yeah, in these Japan people, it's sort of just the norm, like week in, week out for way more than a year. I, I, but I, I think as well, I think, I think, like, in this article, what we're saying is it's normal, it's very normal in Japan to work 60 hours a week. Um, but that's not necessarily saying these guys are taking pictures of work 60 hours a week. I think what they're saying is, like, their extremes are different to our extremes. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. normally to work 40 hours a week, and we rarely ever see someone on the street because they've worked too hard yeah. falling asleep. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember the last time that happened. If I'm honest, I've never <laughs> ever they, seen it. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I can um sort of understand where these guys are coming from. I only did it for a year and a half. I only did it to save up for our deposit for the house, and I was probably close to working. Probably close to working, uh, fifty to sixty hours a week to save up for that um for the to save up for the deposit of our house. We pretty much was what, living off air sandwiches, just to just to save up for the deposit. But I can sort of understand that. Like I was, yeah, that was that was ridiculous. That was, I was working close to forty to fifty hours a month on overtime, just to like wow, yeah, I was consistently for like for a year for probably every second for... every second month. No, no, every second month. No, no. I don't know. It's about every three weeks. I was working. Uh, I was working a lot of hours, and I pretty much didn't even see my bank account until, until we were ready to buy a house. And I was like, "Oh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of wow. money." Wow. <laughs> that's Dude, a lot. Because you'll catch me some weeks working like sixty, seventy hours in the week, but I, like, that's okay. But I can't do that for like a long. long period. I have to have then another week, which is like a thirty-hour week or something. Yeah. So I think it's like in theory, I'm like, yeah, I work, and I hear a lot of people say like, I'll do. 60 70 hour weeks to get to a certain position but then when you do it it's just like whoa it's a you know yeah, like yeah. I, th- I think it all it's... depends on what you do outside of work i don't think it's got anything to do with how long you're at work i think it's got everything to do with what you do outside of work yeah yeah like i mean i don't mean, know because if i do 60 hours a week the... when Go on. when i do 60 hours a week plus in london like as a consultant outside of work i would just hit the hotel room and go to sleep do nothing else but i was exhausted like my body was just that's yeah. obviously my personal okay, so story, then, but like, let me ask this. I don't then. know. So, if you're a person who does, like, I'm doing 45 hour Monday to Friday now, like, mm. I'm going to be doing things for more than 15 hours over the weekend. Yeah. So that's why I don't understand. Like, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, I've worked 60 hour weeks before in jobs. Yeah, I, but have you done it consistently for like a year? No, but then at the same time, I've not had the priority to. That's what yeah, I'm, what saying. I'm like, saying. If your this is, this is my only work. point is that what I'm saying working 60 hours a week, like, um, I'm, what I'm trying to say is when people say 60 hours a week, yeah, I've done that like a few times. But then when you say, okay, now I'll do that for a year straight and it's not your choice, like at the weekend you choose to work. When these guys are like, 60 hours a week is what you have to do to keep your job in Japan. And that's and then not sometimes just for one year, on that's that. for like decades. Yeah, that's for their life. And then, and then on top of that, sometimes you have to do overtime even more. Yeah. Um, that's like where, um, for me, it really impresses me when people can do that. I mean, I don't know whether they should do it. So Consist- that consistency for me is like, whoa. yeah. It that's, was that's after the US destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan borrowed money um, and in less than 20 years became one of the largest economies on the planet. And it was down to their hardworking culture that the then prime minister, if that's what they call it there, put this sort of work mm. ethic thing in place and it's just stuck around. But they are concerned because there's um, like an uprising of heart failure and suicide. Um, so that's the government at the moment is trying to encourage people to take some time off work. So 
So, this week, I found <laughs> out that Will Smith turned down to be Neo in The Matrix. Yeah. Yeah, know that. That worked out well. I did not it? know that. Did it work out all right? For Keanu Reeves. Off, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, not for Will Smith. I'm talking about Will Smith. Anyways, so the reason why... The reason why he turned down the role was because of the pitch. Apparently, the two directors, like he said, there's a fine line between crazy and genius. And he said when they did the pitch, they sounded cra- crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they pretty much told Will Smith, they said, look, imagine this. You're going to jump, right? And then you're going to freeze in midair. And then we're gonna we have this new special technique with cameras, and all these cameras will go off around you, and then that will be able for us to like the audience will be able to like sort of rotate around you with this new camera trick, and like at that time, at that time he was like, "What the hell are you talking about? There is no <laughs> tech. I have not seen any cameras that like all of a sudden I can freeze and then you can rotate me, right?" So he said. So I passed and I did Wild Wild West. Now, <laughs> that was an excellent movie. So I, Great career choice. I thought I knew this, but I don't think I did actually. Because I just saw it on his Instagram. So I just wanted to ask you, could you see Will Smith as Neo? No. Like, no. Yeah. No. So yeah. Keanu Reeves. It would be, co- it would be a different movie. It would be a yeah, different, be a different movie. movie. Like it would have a different feel. It would have a way it. different feel. You can see it, Alexander, did you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, think about, like, him and I am legend and stuff. Like, that type of role, he's he can hold, I believe. Keanu, you're, I think if you don't see it, I think it's because you're thinking too much about how Keanu acts the role. Yeah, I think that's... What but do you just mean think about the character. Don't think about how he acts. Oh, it. the character, the character, character. I just feel like... Keanu did such a good job. It's hard to separate yeah. him from the movie now. That's funny you say th- that. A lot of people say Keanu Reeves is a like bad actor. Oh, uh, yeah. I think if Will Smith did it, you'd have like um. I don't. Uh, he would have yeah. his moments of comedic in there. As uh, that's well, what I'm thinking. Change the feel of it. I think um in the role in the Matrix, he was a good actor, but it wasn't like it wasn't a hard role to play. There wasn't like it wasn't very. How do you put it? Like. The skill was quite it was like a one type skill. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, how do you yeah. say? I, I don't know how I'm explaining this. One dimensional. One dimensional. Yeah, it wasn't. There wasn't too much to it. One dimensional. That's probably the best way. Um, <laughs> I think. I, 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 I think t- what would have been interesting though is I think the dynamic of Morpheus to Neo. Oh, I was well going to say that because Morpheus is a large character compared to Neo, and I think if you have Will Smith, that might have changed the dynamic a little bit. Yeah, because yeah. then Will Smith's also a large dude. What were you? I'm assuming you weren't thinking that exact thought, Dev. What were you thinking? No, I was thinking about the like. I was thinking that. I'm like, it's oh, okay. that's two big characters. Like, um, uh, Neo. Lawrence I mean, Fishburne. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves is very timid and yeah, yeah, but he holds his own. In yeah. Whereas Will Smith, he loves to dominate the. It's it's and, and, and that's what made it work. The fact that Keanu Reeves is so quiet and. So yeah, spoken. that's right. Yeah, yeah. But I still uh, right. So imagine like the the initial interaction between Morpheus and Neo, where they're um, where like he's sort of teaching him about take blue pill, red pill, that kind of stuff. Like, I could just imagine Will Smith in that position, but like making that way more funny. Yeah, make, it would like, be. Just are, make it. Are you thinking about him as French pr- Fresh Prince Will Smith or I am Legend Will Smith? Because like, if I think of Fre- all right. <laughs> I am yeah. legend. So initially, funny. I'm thinking when he's like, um, what, uh, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. I'm thinking Fresh Prince. When he goes to Neo, I'm thinking I am legend. Right. Like he has well, a transformation like, of. But to be fair, Will Smith has a lot of roles he can play. Like he's yeah. 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 When you look at yeah. like the movies he's been in, he's been so many different types of. Oh yeah. Types of people. Yeah. Oh, that really like, sad like, one. Uh, concussion, seven pounds, one? like concussion, yeah. seven pounds, concu- are yeah, different. To, What's the really sad one where I he's think with he's, his daughter? I think he's an extremely no. versatile his son? actor. Yeah. Seven oh. pounds. It's seven, seven pounds. pounds. He's an entrepreneur. Yeah. With yeah. the IT so machine. Seven pounds, Medi- no, Medi- seven pounds is one where he gives, where he dies. Oh. And he gives away oh. his... He's you've got an seen, illness I don't want to ruin it if you've not seen it. I don't know. It's too late. Said film. The D word. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I it robot. is too late, but I don't think it is as well. Oh, yeah, iRobot was good. No. I haven't given away the most important part. Oh yeah, Bad Boys. Bad Boys is Bad Boys, Boys. Four's coming out, isn't it? Or three? Three. Three. Hancock. 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 You know what? 
what though? Um, going back to Keanu, he is so loved, right? Because he's just like a man of the people too. I saw like a uh <coughs> some article last week where he's like, oh, you know, with his big beard and that, and there something had broken down, bus or coach or whatever, and he. Well, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was an airplane. I don't know. Anyway, and he just hops on the bus with 40 other normal folk and um, hitches a ride, basically. And they love him for that. They're hitches like, oh, look ride. at Keanu. He's he's always just, you know, just normal. Is, is that how you describe everyone who gets a bus? They're just hitching a ride. <laughs> Okay, so your article is again, Dev, about the escalators. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, what is it about? Ah, now? the escalators. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Ernest, what was your what's your article about? The escalators. This is different. I think this article is in America, but you know yeah. when you go on an escalator, yeah. you're supposed to stay to the l- in Australia. You're supposed to stay to the left, yes. so the people that really want to go fast can go down the right. Yeah. In America, people have to stay on the right. Yep. So apparently it's like that in the Same rest of the London. world. <laughs> We're the only place where you have to stand on the left. Everywhere everywhere else you've got to stand on Are the right. Are you saying right. we're weird? Yeah, we're a little backwards. We're a little bit. <laughs> so no, we're limited, to, we're limited to the left. <laughs> this article is saying that if people didn't walk on escalators, that we would be more... Efficient. Okay, efficient. so basically there was a study so, done... Oh. Oh yeah, go. I was, I've I've watched a YouTube video on this about two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and it explained exactly how you're supposed to use escalators, and they did it in London, where they actually yes. for six months trialed it. Um, trialed so you're supposed to stand side by side, uh, mm-hmm. and when they did it, the flow of track people got through quicker, and then yeah. as soon as they stopped the trial, everyone went back to the old way. Yeah. So I thought that it was only a three week. Um a three, they, they ran the live version of it for three weeks at Holborn Station in Central London, but it could have been there could have been a longer one as well. Um, and they actually refused to let people walk, so they'd have like guards in certain <laughs> places on the escalator. Guards. Or they'd have like <laughs> they'd have you, like couples you? holding hands so no one could pass <laughs> them. So just to force everyone to stand two by two by two by two by two by two. And basically, um, on one of their escalators, it usually carries 12,745 passengers between 8.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. in a normal week, was yeah. actually able to carry 16,220 passengers with those standing rules in place. And the reason is, apparently, <laughs> only... Only 25% of people actually walk. The other 75% stand still. So you're having your, and, and if you're already taking up one, like if you're leaving a whole, I guess, one section of the escalator free for only 25% of the people, it's not efficient, mm-hmm. is what they were trying to say. Uh, right. I was gonna say is it because there was two so big burly men holding everyone back, catching the escalator every five seconds, going up and down, up and down, up and down, going <laughs> stop? <laughs> when, was you, that? when you watch when you watch the video it, it, you get to see it from a visual standpoint which is really good because it explains uh like you can see how they do the foot traffic and that but what was also interesting was from the safety standpoint and i actually was going to send this video to you max because i wanted to see what your opinion was uh i didn't know if you like knew about this kind of stuff from an engineering perspective but like it you're actually from a safety perspective supposed to stand in the middle because by standing on either side, you're causing the escalator to load weight where it's not supposed to. And if you oh. watch the videos of where escalators go wrong, it's very dangerous. But oh. person can't don't they prepare for that? Can't they like they know everyone stands on the right in this town, so we load it. I can imagine you can engineer your way around that. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't well, according to this, it, no, and that's why escalators go faulty. Um, <laughs> because over over a significant period of time, if you think everyone's always going down, as Emma said, seventy five percent of people always going down yeah. one side of an escalator, you're putting a lot more load onto That's one side and wearing tear on one side. Yeah. That is very, uh, yeah, yeah. really interesting. But so you know now, what? when I go down escalators, I'm terrified because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> any second this could just like start speeding up. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but are like- you really terrified? <laughs> Well, no, I mean, escalator accidents How do often happen. do escalators, like, how often, is it like escalators 
accidents happen enough that the, this is like a reason to make this change or is it i'd love to see the graph uh, of the accidents like how many get actually get caught in the escalator and how many aiden just, uh, has twice his shoelace when he was with your dad yeah and it could have been really bad had he not been standing in front of your dad for your dad to be able to see no yeah. but the shoelace but, would just snap wouldn't it no i've read articles where the shoelace has got caught and ripped the, the shoe into the side of the thing and like chewed off toes and stuff like that Hmm. Oh, so bad. Um, but Even, remember when we used to wear baggy jeans? Yeah. Mine, mine got like, cause I used to my uh, the back part used to just rub on the floor. All of us rubbed on right. the floor. Right. So like mine was all frayed, and it started to yeah. it started to go in the escalator. I just ripped it up. <laughs> I just ripped my pants up, and it's just like this massive, not a massive one, just a little cut in S- the bottom. See, I, I used to do something right. It's quite unusual. I used to take a step, like lift my feet up. To go over that. Oh, you're so smart. Yeah. You're so, so smart. So like, my, my, <laughs> you know, just, you know. Yeah, what am I thinking about that? Like lift your foot up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> but this, um, okay, so walking. when they were doing this test, <laughs> like it was infuriating people. Like, what do you mean I have to stand still or whatever? Because it's kind of usually like every man for themselves, right? Usually that's what they say, like. You just feel if you're constantly moving, you're getting somewhere faster. Like, it's like, don't slow me down. I don't want to stop. I mean, you are getting there faster. No, don't confuse it. This is saying the the total amount of more people get three per hour. But as a one person, I will get there quicker if I walk. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're one person, you will get there quicker if you walk. But it actually, the study showed that by doing this, actually more people reach their destination faster because more people got on. Yeah, so the question no, 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 is, no, no, that, no. is that is that metric yeah. a good metric to say um, that's the best way to use the system? That's the question. Well, there's a few countries that have tr- been trialing it in some places with mixed results and people aren't liking it, to be honest. So Emma, let me, let me, <laughs> let me give you some, some fun statistic education. Not, more people aren't getting there faster because 25% of people are getting there slower and 25% <laughs> of people are getting there faster. <laughs> 25? So actually, on average, <laughs> they're getting there at the same pace. What? Because <laughs> if you take 12,000 people we're getting through, you're saying yeah. 25% of people go fast, 75% of people go slow. All you're doing by 25 go doing fast, it, 75 go slow. So now, when you, when you make them go at the same speed, 25% mm-hmm. of people are going to get there slower than they would have had they have walked. Yeah. yeah. But then 25% more people will get on. So you're not yeah, actually, the, so the average, the, um, the average, 50% of the people will still get there the same pace they were going to. So you, the carry, the you carry the 75% the one? that stood before will now get on the escalator quicker the than they one. used to get on the escalator. Plus, plus, so therefore plus, they, get, plus, they get to their destination five. faster. <laughs> carry the one. Yeah. yeah. And then you shake it all about and you do the hockey pokey and you turn yep. around. Yep. Alexander, yep. When you <laughs> carry the one, you're right. Because <laughs> four, so of the 16,000 people that now get through, yeah. 4,000 of them would have got there oh, quicker. Yeah. That's it. Oh, but you've got no, an extra 4,000 people. More, yeah, more than that. My headphones off today. <laughs> just reset. Oh. No, if you're just saying 25% of a population walk, then of 16,000, yeah. 4,000 of them would have walked and 4,000 would have got there quicker. But no, the same because time, the reason they got there quicker is because the people in front of them went quicker. What? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm out. The four thousand that are now that now fit on the escalator, like the the reason you can get you've got an the... additional four thousand people on there, yeah. But four thousand of those people would have walked and got there quicker. Because yeah, twenty five percent would same... have got there quicker. Yeah, and twenty. But you've also now got an additional four thousand. So what I'm saying is, on average, they're getting there at the same speed. You're just getting more people there at the same speed. I uh, mm, I don't know about that, so... but. <laughs> I think I'm happy to get it quicker, but we'll disagree with that bit. But the, I, I got a solution for your um, everyone stands on the right hand side problem. Yeah, everyone stands on the left. You just because you can just change the direction of the escalator, make the one that goes up down and the one that goes down up. And if you stand on the right hand side, that's now the opposite side to the oh! right hand side the other way. That's a good solution. I got a solution. One minute warning. But you know, have you ever gone down? Have you ever? Because that means you're changing the orientation of the escalators, right? Like, so have you ever mistakenly gone on the escalator that was going up because no. they've. 
both mistakenly and non mistakenly. Yeah, because usually, so on in Australia, you go on the left hand side, left hand escalator to go down. I've but done it on purpose the, to try to run up the escalators. But you're saying to switch it, right? So the left hand side will go up, and the right hand side will go down. But that will oh, be. Oh no! So like oh. in no no no. So for oh. example, where I go, um, the train, the stop I get off at in the morning when I go to yeah. work on the train when I arrive at my station. There's yeah. not that many people come down. So there's two escalators and a set of stairs in the middle. So both escalators oh, go up. And then no. in the evening, both escalators come down. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So that solves the problem, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So my, my, since we solved, I solved that engineering, um, engineering problem, Issue? I have an edi- <laughs> etiquette uh, question. Problem? Question. Go. Yeah. How close... How much gap do you have between you and the person in front of you? One step. One. Yeah. One step. One step. So if they smell nice, <laughs> less. What have, you done? <laughs> what have you done? No. So you leave that one step, right? But then the person behind you decides to just step right behind. And you're just like, you, you feel like telling them, mate, one step etiquette. One, <laughs> go back one. What are you doing? But do you, it's, when it's that like happens, you do like the, I do a half what? step. So I put my, like my left foot will go on the one in front of me then. And I'm kind of in the middle of the steps. Oh, yeah. So you're about. So that makes sense? Yeah. So then I get half a step between two of them. But then if he comes up half a step, then then there's trouble. Then we're going to have to have a discussion. <laughs> 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 yes, Alexander, like the urinal. I do not know Emma, that. No, Emma, Emma doesn't get that, but that's because you're a woman, huh? <laughs> the, the person like if there is like eight or like five you uh, u- i don't know why i say urinal urinals right urinals, if there are yeah. five urinals I think, what the hell's urinal and you go <laughs> and you go to the end and the person goes right next to you it's oh. like what the freak move move over man like what How are you doing the person comes but- next to you and wants to have a chat what? No, I've never no. had that. I've had that. I've okay. had that. <laughs> wow. I'm like, this never. is not the time. <laughs> never had that. <laughs> okay, let's do your article next, Dev. I feel like this whole pod last these podcasts have just been my articles. Yeah. Guys, you've got to put in your articles in. Yeah. Maybe this is a good chance for us to reach out to our listeners and say, how about you guys suggest an article? We'll go through them and pick one. Like, Where can they maybe, reach us? Hmm, okay. Send us a message if you're in Facebook or email the b-side word at gmail.com. There you go. How about Instagram? You can can they hit us up on Instagram? Or you can hit us up on Instagram. What what is how can they find us on Instagram? At the B side word. How about on you, uh, YouTube? Could they reach us on YouTube? Leave a you message. You can at the B side word. Oh, We're so I see easy. A thing going on here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking. Hmm. See guys, we've made it very easy for you all. Okay. Actually, no, but seriously. Send us articles and we'll read through them and then maybe we can pick like a listener article once a fortnight or something like that. Yep. Maybe once a week. We'll see. Depending on the listeners. Depends how good they are. Yeah. Okay. I reckon the next article will be mine. And it is about the um, electric vehicle debate happening in Australia at the moment. There's a debate? At the moment, Scott Morrison is Prime Minister and he's for the Liberal Party and then you've got Labour's, right? So Scott Morrison is pretty much against having electric vehicles, okay? Yeah. Whereas the Labour Party want to introduce electric vehicles. So the Labour Party actually want to have 50% of new vehicle sales to be electric by 2030, okay? Whereas Scott Morrison is saying, oh, um, he said you should be able to have your choice about the sort of vehicle you want to drive that you want to get around in on the weekend or if you want to be, you know, a soccer mum and load up the car. Do you know what I mean? Like if you want an SUV, you can have an SUV. And he's saying um, that the Labour Party is basically planning to tax your ute by implementing 50% electric vehicles. Do you guys know what a ute is? Like a... 
trailer utility. It's like a. It's oh. got a tray, aluminium tray. A tray at the back. That's not what it means here. You means young person here. Youth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tax. we're trying to tax your youth. Tax, tax <laughs> you have too many youths, you get taxed. But it's U T E, guys. Right. Okay. So, um, basically, this billionaire guy whose name is Mike Cannon Brooks. Never heard of him. Um, but he's a co-founder of uh, enterprise software company Atlassian. Atlassian? Atlassian. I don't know. He tweeted and he said, I'm pretty sure Elon wouldn't think 50% of new vehicles sold being electric in 11 years is anyway is in any way ambitious. As for our prime minister's comments that electric vehicles will end the weekend, quote unquote, for consumers. Elon, being a man of the people, how I already always say, responded saying, Norway has already proven it could be done last month. No question Australia could do this in far fewer than 11 years. And basically he's saying that, you know, um, trying to, that, that saying 11 years, you want to only see 50% is like, that target is way too low. We're pretty laid back here. Yeah, we're chilled. Yeah. So apparently Norway's... Um, in the first two months of 2019 alone, passenger vehicle sales already hit 50% rate of electric vehicles. Hmm. Do you know anything? I think we got 2020, 2025, and all sales will be, all new cars will be electric vehicles. By That's 2025. What I, was I don't think it's going to be a choice. I don't, <laughs> the I government know. saying that we want this, I don't, I think it's up to car manufacturers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, where's the car manufacturers people chiming in in this? What? Why well, is they're going to keep doing what makes the money? Not government. Well, I just mean it's up to car manufacturers in the perspective of they don't produce gasoline vehicles and you can't buy gasoline vehicles. That's yeah, true. but if I'm a car manufacturer and the government doesn't tell me I'm not allowed to do that, they will still be doing that to make money, right? Yeah. And not just that, you also got old vehicles. Why? Why because there's a lot be of people it? that still want to buy, there's a lot of people that still want to buy gasoline cars because of all the benefits of it. Like in Norway, for instance, like there's no way we would go 100% electric vehicles without the government forcing us that way. So that wouldn't be... No, now, but I'm talking... We're talking when technology is going to be in a very different place in even five years. So from mm. a car manufacturer standpoint, I can imagine it would be a lot cheaper for them to produce electric. Yeah, potentially in the future. that's what the R&D is going into. But it's, it's just... Um, it's just uh, that's not just the fact that car manufacturers then provide a cheaper car, which is electric and more efficient but it's all to do with supply and demand right if consumers want a pe petrol car car manufacturers will still make even though they'll charge more for it they'll still make that petrol car well, yeah. i don't do you i don't I, mean? I think it's <laughs> supply and demand like i i think you put too much weight on demand in the sense of people don't demand things people demand what they're given like people i don't think people are gonna go no I want a gasoline vehicle. <laughs> like, Not like a toddler. I, 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 <laughs> I don't want I think it. People are just going to be like, oh, this is the way no, it's going. No, but they I'm would be well. like, like, they would still. That, if it's a, a monopoly, of say. course, that's when demand doesn't mean as much. But then when there's 10 car manufacturers, five of them st stop doing petrol cars, but then more sales go to the other five, which where people want to carry on buying petrol cars, then the other five manufacturers do better. So they carry on producing petrol cars. They're but not going to be like, actually, no, I'm going to go. Follow. But again, like, I don't think, like, I, I don't know, I, this could be extremely naive, but, like, I've never, because obviously have these conversations with people talking about, because, you know, I like this stuff. I've never heard someone go, mm -hmm. yeah, but no, I'm going to want a petrol car. Like, I, I don't think people care that much. I, I think the idea I, I, that we I care I think there's a small minority that do care. Yeah, I can imagine, like, I for care. example, We're I can just imagine supercars. Yeah. I can imagine supercars staying that way. But even then, actually, mm -hmm. I can imagine supercars not, because... If you look at the Tesla Roadster, it performance is better because it's oh, not, not, yeah. it's not that. It's the like some people just like the nostalgia of having those yeah. old school cars and that. But yeah, it, yeah no, but that's then, a niche. But then those people I don't think will be buying new petrol cars. I think they'll be buying old petrol yeah. cars. No, Alex, yeah. I'm not I'm not my my argument isn't that um like in the future in a, again that is supply and demand that when electric cars become so good that they outperform petrol cars in every way of course people will buy electric cars but then when they're in this mean time where it's not in that situation that's why the government have to step in and push people in the direction that they think's best and that's and what not doesn't only, make sense not only push people in the direction because of uh 
today's world and how much uh, emissions we're producing, but the more money that goes into that industry, the better that industry gets. Yeah. Well, I say the better, the more yeah. it progresses. But and that's again, what, I mean, that's, what's that's Elon's whole purpose with Tesla, isn't it? Like he doesn't want to be the yeah. manufacturer of electric cars. He just wants to force other people to start putting their money into the research so that he can develop quicker. But then yeah. you understand the technology better than I do, Maxi. Like by 20, mm-hmm. by 2027, let's say, because we're getting close to 2030 then. Like, do you think yeah. that electric cars will be behind petrol in terms of 20, their performance? Yeah. I, well, it well, depends where uh, you are. Uh, in Norway, in, yes. It uh, depends where in the world, yeah. I think it won't be... Because it's, it's a big, big infrastructure change. So any country which has the money to change the infrastructure, then yeah, it, electric cars will win. But places like in, I don't know, India, for instance, might not be able to change so quickly. So they would have to rely on being able to carry a, a barrel of petrol and put it on the side of the road and then top up a car as it drive by. Do you know what I mean? I don't and what I don't too- get is the the prime minister, like why I feel like by him saying these things is kind of like a fear mongering. It's kind of like one of those things like, oh, they're trying to take away your rights. They're trying to take away your free choice to be able to drive an SUV or they're trying to, do you know what I mean? And that's the actual prime minister. Why is he not pushing for sustainable? He can't agree with the opposition. Yeah. No, okay. This is the problem with our politics. If someone has a good idea, someone's going to be like, other <laughs> side is going to rip it apart because they didn't come up with it. Yeah. 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 Instead so, of taking the idea, like, why not take the idea? I don't get this. Yeah, right. we'll do that as well. Yeah, Which is why I can't stand what, politics in general. Because I've forgotten the, I've forgotten the name of the argument. Maxi, you might know this logical fallacies. I've forgotten the name of this one. Like, I've been looking these up a lot lately because when I have discussions with people or I, I guess debates with people. I'm getting to the point where I'm like, all right, like the, you're not using logic. You're, you're using other things. And there's these 10 logical fallacies. And that's one of them. And I can't remember the name of it, <coughs> where people think it's either or. Like it's this or this. And that's how politics yeah. runs, which is really frustrating. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I find it quite childish. Like if someone comes with a good, so if someone comes with a good plan that, that benefits everyone, go with it. Yeah. I know. The, um, but I, not so like I always big up Norway. There's not they're not perfect system. But one of the good things about Norway is because there's so many parties that are active and that, like there's uh, uh, don't comment this. Maybe like eight potential parties that get voted into power. Oh. It means that it's not always either or. It means oh, like it, it, you never ever have one party in charge. It's always a coalition. Sometimes two. Sometimes three. Mainly. So they they tend to have a bit more of a view of like. You say this, we say this, you say this. Okay, how do we blend that? Or well rounded, get the best. That's that's well rounded, more well rounded. That's more well rounded. That's why you are where you are. (laughs) Yeah. One minute warning. I I guess it's, I I don't want to pretend that obviously it's a perfect system because there are still issues which are global issues, which are like immigration, this or this. Like it goes one way or the other. And then that's a similar thing where we still fall into those things, but it's better than the UK or the US, for example. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> News. So what do you reckon? Where do you think we're going to be by 2030? 50% or not? Um, In where? Australia. In Australia. There's, there's a... I got taught uh, this by my boss this week. There's a rule that if you set a target, you'll hit that target. So oh. if you aim for 50%, you'll probably be close to 50%. If yeah, but uh, by me setting the target is... <laughs> <laughs> not you. Um, if I set the target, I mean is it going to happen? <laughs> just, just another. Have you seen? Thing. Um, I mean, the government. Sh- if the government, if the government pushes for fifty percent by twenty thirty, likelihood is you'll be around fifty percent by twenty thirty. Hmm. Have you, mm-hmm. have you, um, have you heard how quiet an electric car is? I've never even been in one. <laughs> it is, it is yeah. scary how quiet it is. It is scary. Like I was, yeah. about, I was crossing the street. And like I was looking, I looked, I looked left and right, and just as normal. And then this car, oh, because I was on the corner, and all of a sudden this electric car pulled up to the corner, and I was like, and I looked, and I went, where the? F-? I was like, <laughs> where did you come from? It's, Sneak attack! It's so quiet. The only reason why I heard it was the the wheel noise That's on so the funny. on the actual. But other than that, I wouldn't have known that was there. And then when and, it took uh, off, Teslas are even quieter because Teslas have uh, in their wheels they have like foam padding thing which like oh. reduces the noise so, so they're even just, harder to hear you just made me think of a new question a, a new concern i guess then like will there be more people getting hit by vehicles yeah. for not 
Every idiot properly. that's texting and crossing the road that is, is going to get pet, hit. Hey, every oh. time we talk about cars, that's your go-to. I and just, you, and I you just, it. you fire up. Oh, <laughs> you fire up. Every day I see it. <laughs> and, and, and then I see like these cars having to slam their brakes and the people look up going, oh, sorry. <laughs> Especially with people, you know, pe- like, I think we use kids <laughs> more to cross roads now than ever before because of phones. <laughs> yeah. But with, with so silent cars. Um, I don't know if I, I've heard it before that for blind people, electric cars are a really big issue. Oh. Oh. I don't oh, know yeah. if, if for a normal person, I guess we're talking about the extremities, right? When people actually get hit, like you just change your habits, right? Yeah. Like you just, yeah. You just don't ever step in the road without looking. But I guess it, maybe at the edge of that, the people that forget that little step are more likely to be hit. They don't have the extra sense to help them out. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting, but it's, it is being looked into and there's been, uh, there've been people sort of campaigning for, mufflers them to have artificial noise. Yeah. yeah. I was <laughs> gonna say, it's kind of like a uh, buttons, isn't like, it? Like mufflers but- the opposite, isn't it? But yeah. Buttons no, on. you can get mufflers that make noise. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Do uh, yeah. you remember those, those little exhausts? Yeah, ee- that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> no, you get the, like, like you, a, put a, thought, you put a hole in an exhaust, then it'll start making noise. Okay. It's a ledger card. It's, it's like, an exhaust. But, it's like yeah, but a, a muffler is, it, it deadens the sound in some way. In the cars, the mufflers are normally really good, but you can change it so it's not as good and it doesn't, but I don't think any mufflers boost sound. Yeah, the what do you um the catalyst Is isn't the catalyst like you can change the catalyst in the exhaust? Is it called the catalyst? Yeah, and then you can have that. Um, I don't know yeah, if the ca- ca- the catalytic, catalytic, catalytic converter, converter something like, like it. Called. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And then haven't you yeah, seen yeah. like in in London they would have had it those massive exhaust pipes at the back of the cut. Ca- like, yeah, and they make. But what I'm saying is. What well, I'm saying not, is those exhaust, muffler, the catalytic converter it? dampens the noise. Oh, when right. you take that away, it goes to what it would sound like without it on. Oh, it doesn't right, 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 boost right. the noise. Okay, okay. So, yeah, uh, right. like... Uh, what was it? But anyway, that's not important. <laughs> 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 but they, yeah, they're saying maybe they should make them make a noise. Yeah. Um, and what, but what noise would you choose? That's interesting. But well, it's like a button. <laughs> Do we... Do we go right back to like the horses no, and make it have can... like the popping noise oh, of the horse? Oh, maybe you can have your... <laughs> nee. No, maybe you nee. can have your own soundtrack. Like you can have your own sort of, you know, ringtone, but your own Could your, you imagine 50,000 50, oh, yeah. cars with their own ringtone car going tone. down the bloody highway? You, you get Could one you car imagine... driving down, I'm bringing sexy back. <laughs> <laughs> and some guy just bobbing his head. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. I love it. Imagine if the, um, one of them had like I'm um, blue da 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 da. That'd be annoying <laughs> as hell. It would the be, but way. that's their car tone. You can't say anything about it. It's their personality shining through. Oh, I'd, I'd put on ludicrous. Move, <laughs> get out the way. <laughs> yeah. Move, bitch, get out the way. Yeah. Oh did you know? Gosh. Did you know? Like on machines, mechanical buttons that the click you hear has been put in just so that we know the button's been pressed. There you go. Wow. Now the artificial noise. So it's the same principle. Wow. What's that? On mechanical equipment, when you press yeah. the button in, the click, they put that in there, the click sound, so uh-huh. that you know that it's been pressed. Yeah. yeah. There's loads of things like that. Yeah. Like when you press buttons at a crossing and it, they when, um, well, elevators do it, where you press a button, it closes doors, it doesn't actually mean anything often. Uh, when you go to cross the street, if you press the button really? for the, if it's an intersection, you press the button for the lights to go green so you can walk. That often doesn't mean anything. Um, like there's never good What one. do you mean? Yeah, I'm so confused. Like what do you mean it doesn't mean anything? So like when you, it doesn't actually do anything. So you know when you go in an elevator, a lift, and you press the closed doors button? Yeah. you're like, close, close, it doesn't actually close the doors. It does. It does. No. Not Next, always. Sometimes it does. I think it's more timing than <laughs> sometimes. This is actually spinning me out. No, 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 it does. Now that I've understood what that is. Emma's mind is blown. It's as if yours is not blown at the moment. I press it just as a habit. Next time you get in a lift, let's let's all test it. I'm getting in one soon. Next time you get in a lift, press a, like, get in and immediately press the close button and see if it closes. But it does, it does. I'm the guy that goes to the, uh, to the, um, the button and I'm pressing it multiple times. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but it yeah. apparently does nothing. So I could hit it a thousand times. In That's my th- very normal. In my thinking, it's like if I press it multiple times, there's like ten people here, <laughs> so they're gonna hurry up and change the lights quicker. <laughs> <laughs> same. I had the same thinking. 
but it's not. Apparently, it does oh, nothing. You, Emma, you got to think about timing as well. Like, if you press it when it's close to <laughs> closing anyway. No, but sometimes I get it. in and, and then you close it straight away because there's like no one and it closes. That's because there's only one person yeah. that has the button to get in. What about the open but like, button? So Does that every work? time, but every time someone works through the door, right? Like it senses someone's walked through the door, then it will say, "Okay, now I'm going to wait three seconds." So if yeah. you get in straight away and you press it, two seconds later the door closes. But if you step in and then people are coming and you're waiting for them, so if, like people keep walking through. When the last person comes in, the lift goes, "Okay, now I need to wait three seconds," and then you press it because you're like everyone's in now. You're just sort of confirming what the lift was going to do anyway. Yeah. Um, wow. So it feels Let's like you're pressing this out. And the, That's blown my mind. And, absolutely and the reason they do it, the, uh, well, apparently the reason they do it, this is what I've heard, and they can say what well, maybe they can't be, they're too lazy to fit it properly. But the reason they do it is because if they did let people shut it, then it just causes too much, like people try and shut it too yeah, early and they've yeah. not let everybody in. So the gap between people walking in is never really more than three seconds. So it means that that's a good system to say, okay, they've had enough time. That's the last person. Bloody Whereas you hell. try and do it like you can but wait too then long. Why have you the forget. option? If why you are you fighting this, Emma? Why? Oh yeah. Are so you the option. This? Then here's this is why there's the option. This is the whole point. Is when you stand in there it, after two seconds, you might think the lift isn't working because there's nothing and you can't do anything about it. And that would be like that's enough for you to be like, ah, oh, this is. I feel this like is taking too long. But if you if you press it, you're like, oh, maybe I didn't press it right. You press it again, then it closes. You're like, yeah, I've done that. Like, <laughs> I got it all in the I control. feel like Maxi, Maxi and Alexander should ask you if you wanted the red pill or the blue pill because this has just blown your mind. <laughs> like, <this laughs> is the... You are not willing it's to funny, accept reality it's funny at the moment. You're in red and blue as well. <laughs> well yeah. What is it? Red and blue? Yeah, yeah but you're the, the blue pill and Emma's the red pill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you're not willing to accept this at all. He's like, no, just, Maxi, you're lying. The button works. It's it like works. you just told me that the earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> the closed button. The world is flat? <laughs> That's kind of on the Emma, scale of like Emma's things. Emma's going to start a whole conspiracy one's wow, YouTube channel. And one's like, eh. <laughs> uh, sorry, Alexander. Emma's going to start a whole conspiracy YouTube channel about lift buttons. <laughs> yeah, gonna, you're gonna tie it to some crazy conspiracy. No, no but you have entered This is my an mind. American website. Ready? Uh, the doors, uh, the doors comply. The elevator starts moving, and you breathe a sigh of relief. This is a familiar scenario for many, but it's also a big fat lie. That's because most of the door close buttons in the U.S. elevators don't actually work. Only firefighters are able to close the elevator doors manually through the use of a key. So it might actually be a safety thing to say that no one should be able to close the doors. Like, but then maybe in Australia in it works because I swear hands <laughs> down, <laughs> hands <laughs> down, it works for me. Okay, everyone, keep listening to the B-Side Word. Rate, review, leave comments, subscribe, like our Instagram page, like our Facebook page, tell your friends, share. Bye.